Hi there, welcome to the channel. My name is Brian and today we're going to be talking about dry brushing, which is a technique that I really, really like to use uh, when I'm painting Space Marine Power Armor. All the miniatures that you're seeing on the screen right now have been dry brushed at some point along the way. It doesn't just have to be Power Armor, I've used it here on Sanguinius' wings as well, just to give that really uh, bright highlight effect, but also this bony armor here on this uh, Inquisitor. So we're going to go through how I like to dry brush and the techniques that I tend to go through along the way. So for today's video, I've got two Space Marines primed up. On the left, I've got some McCrag Blue already laid down. It's everyone's favorite, so that was a good place to start. And on the right, I've got one of my favorite colors. It's uh, Army Painter Dragon Red. It's a really rich, deep red. Before we start talking more paintings and techniques, I'm going to chat a little bit about brushes. You don't need anything fancy when it comes to dry brushing. I do 90% of my dry brushing with these two, which is a Citadel large base brush and a small synthetic dry brush. If you're doing something bigger, like a tank or a vehicle, um, makeup brushes are actually a really, really good cheap alternative as well. You can get them for next to nothing on Amazon. They're soft, they've got rounded ends on them, and really, really, really handy for larger areas. When it comes to getting some paint on the brush, I like to put the paint directly onto the kitchen roll and then grab whatever brush it is you're deciding to use, get the bristles in and really, really work it into the bristles nice and firmly there and then do the exact opposite of what you just did and get as much paint off the bristles as you can. So we'll make a start with our blue boy. Um, first thing I'm going to do is go over the whole miniature with some uh, dark tone just really work it into all the areas. It's going to do two things. It's going to give us nice dark recesses, but it's going to darken down the McCrag blue. I'm going to go back to my initial McCrag blue and then I'm just going to do a fairly heavy dry brush over the whole area. Using the, the largest dry brush you have, just go over the whole miniature and you'll probably think there's not a lot happening here. And when you look at the miniature, you can actually see that the glossy wash that I've used is now being dulled down and that just shows you that there is a thin layer of paint going down on the miniature. You might want to do this a couple of times because you'll just start slowly building up that um, McCrag blue to give us the nice or sort of deep blue that we want. Next up, we're going to take some Calgar blue and I'm kind of doing something similar here. I'm not really trying to catch the edges as such. I'm just going over the raised areas, but I'm just being a bit more gentle. What's that going to, what that is going to be doing is really just lightening up the top areas. I'm not really trying to catch the edges as such. I'm just trying to lighten up the panels here, like the pauldron there on the left. I'm going to go over his, his, uh, his chest piece in a second and things like that. Really just to, like I said, start lightening up. And the more you do that, the more layers you put down, the more gentle you want to be. And as you do that, you will notice the color starting to lighten up. Up next, I'm going to take a really, really pale blue, and I'm just going to go over any parts that you want the, the to, to really stand out on the miniature. So that's like the underside of this chest piece, the top of this helmet, just gently go around with hardly any paint. You'll be surprised at how little paint goes a long way at this stage, so please just take your time here. This is probably the part where you'll spend the longest, you want to be the most careful that you can because you're going over sort of more um, intricate areas in the model, like the backpack and these that you can see the areas on his forearm where he's throwing the grenade. I've really just gently gone over there with this light blue. What you don't want, like I said, is to just have these big streaky marks in the areas where you don't want it. You'll be surprised how the paint catches on to these sort of raised areas and gives you quite a natural looking highlight there. So what we're going to do now is jump over to the red model and what I'm going to show you is same process, just different colours basically. So um, a base red paint, then some Army Painter Strong Tone, Agrax Earth Shade is, is almost identical. Um, just go over the whole model, dull down the red, get plenty of wash into the recesses and it just really dulls it down a bit. Just like before, we're going to go back to some of the base colour, which is uh, Dragon Red in this instance. Get my large dry brush and just go over the whole miniature. And again, quite subtle, you won't notice it doing a whole lot here, but it does just start to lift the, 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 the dullness of some of the areas back up to the initial red that we had at the start. It's not going to be uniform either. You will notice some areas starting to lighten up, 
um, like the knee pad for example here compared to his shin but that's the whole point in this is to make it um, some areas that are catching the light just that bit lighter than the areas underneath them. Again, just like before, just working up to lighter colours now. So taking a, a lighter red and just going over areas like the top of the knee, the tops of his feet, and again, just really trying to catch areas that stand out more so that these sort of dark areas that have soaked up the wash are, are really a lot duller than these areas where I'm putting the lighter red now. Especially areas like the, the top of the head, the, the, the tops of the shoulders. These are going to be catching the light, so I really, really get uh, plenty of this lighter red on there if you can. I'm going to start being a bit more gentle with the paint now. I'm going to take some, some orange, some uh, lava orange here, and really gently just going over the, the sort of top parts. And every time that you're putting a new layer of paint down, you're probably going to be putting on less and less and less um, on the most extremities of the model to try, again, accentuate the light sort of landing on these areas. What you'll find is you'll be able to start building up some sort of gentle highlights like these areas on the wrist, which are quite prominent on the model. Um, again, just take your time, just have a small amount of paint on the brush and just really gently go over these raised areas to just start accentuating the, the edges and bringing out the highlights. You probably could call it a day there, but I'm just going to take it up one level. I'm going to go in with some uh, really bright yellow here, and I'm really going to go over the extremities of the miniature here. This is just if you want really, really sort of vibrant highlights on some areas. Um, taking some yellow over the red here really just makes them stand out. Like the details on his arm, you go up to the top of the shoulder there as well, and it just gives it almost this naturally shiny, glossy, iridescent look. Take your time, small amount on the paintbrush like I said, and just gently go over these areas and it will really make it stand out. And there they are, side by side. Um, the blue, a wee bit more subtle, and the, the red, I really want to show you go from quite a deep red to quite a, quite a prominent highlight quite easily there. I'm only using a handful of paints um, and keeping the stress quite low as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, anything else you'd like to see a video on, then please just leave a comment or send me a message. My Twitter's in the link below, and I'll see you next time.